A Place to Stay, a shelter story written by Aaron Gunti. I slammed the car door and tucked Bunny Beth under my arm. I don't want to stay here, I told Mama, looking up at the tall building. I know, Mama said softly, but we're very lucky to have a place to stay. I squeezed Bunny Beth to my chest. I didn't feel lucky. This isn't a house, I whispered. You know what, Mama said? I think you're right. Looks more like a palace to me. A palace? I asked. Mama grinned. Let's go inside and see if the queen is here. Inside, we met a woman with short hair sitting in a tall swivel chair. Her name was Kelly. Mama filled out some paperwork, then Kelly said she would show us to our room on the third floor. We passed an area with some sofas and a television on one side. Next, we walked past a room full of toys and books. Oh, wow, Mama exclaimed. I believe we found the treasure cave. Is all of this for me? I asked. You and all the other kids. Maybe you'll make some new friends, said Kelly. Mama said we would visit later. Kelly took us to the room where she said we would sleep. It was very small. Dinner's on the first floor she said before leaving us to unpack. We put our bags on one of the beds. Then Mama pressed on the mattress. A little squeaky, but feels pretty soft. I frowned. That's not my bed. My bed had a fluffy pink blanket and three pillows just for me. This bed had a boring gray blanket and only one pillow. Hmm, Mama replied. You're right, that's not your bed. In fact, that's not a bed at all. She kicked off her shoes and climbed onto the mattress. What are you doing? I asked. Mama took a big bounce. She took another bounce and then another. Her fingertips touched the ceiling. This isn't the bed. This is a rocket ship sending me straight to the stars. You wanna to touch them too? Bouncing looked like fun. It took me a few tries, but I finally touched the ceiling. Mama looked at the clock. Oh, I think it's time to go downstairs for dinner. My tummy rumbled. Yum, I smell spaghetti, Mama said. The dining room was large and full of people talking loudly. Some people stood behind a counter serving food. Others sat at tables eating. I covered my ears. This isn't a kitchen. You're right, Mama said. This isn't a kitchen, it's a banquet hall. A banquet hall, I asked. Yes, and look at how many people have come from near and far to dine with us. Let's get our food and say hello, shall we? Okay, I sighed. We sat next to a woman named Alice and her two children, Grace and Andrew. Alice let me feed Andrew a bottle. Grace and I talked about school and found out we were reading the same book. After dinner, Mama gathered my PJs, soap, and a towel so I could have a shower. I turned the water on then ran my hand under the spray. Brr, I said. You'll just have to wait for the water to warm up before you get in, Mama replied. Wait, that'll never work, I said. Why is that, Mama asked because we won't find warm water here, I smiled. Really? How will we find it? Mama asked. Deep sea diving, I said. Put your diving mask on. We swam to the right, glug. We swam to the left, glug, glug. Over here, I shouted. The water was just right. After my shower, I climbed into my rocket ship and snuggled with Bunny Beth. Mama, this is the most comfortable rocket ship I've ever slept in, I yawned. I think so too, Mama whispered, kissing me on the cheek. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Mama, I whispered back. Five, four, three, two, one.
two, one, and we were off to sleep. How do you think the little girl in this story felt? How do you think the mama was feeling in this story? What could you do to show support and kindness to a family living in a shelter?